Hi, welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I currently work two jobs. I study psychology on the side and I run this YouTube channel. And as you can imagine, it might get a little bit challenging at times. And to be honest, it does. So over the years, I've learned to manage my time really effectively and pretty much just be as productive as I can be with it. Time, I think is the biggest equalizer. We've all got 24 hours in a day and a finite number of years to live. And I believe these three productivity principles that I'm gonna share with you can help you make the most of your time. So you can have the time to do things that you love and most importantly, have time for yourself as well. The first thing that I wanna share with you is batching tasks. Now I've encouraged a lot of people in my life to be doing this. They've asked me like, how do you get so much done? And I actually don't think I actually get too much done. Um, but one thing that I suppose has helped me and I suppose give, I'm given other people this perception that I get a lot done is this idea of like batching tasks. Now, before I get into what that actually is, let me just share with you a bit of information. I was doing a bit of reading a couple of years ago on this idea of like batching tasks and multitasking, whether it's actually efficient or not. And I remember this coming across a study by Stanford University that pretty much explained that if you're spending a lot of your time task switching or like task switching in general, can actually cost you about four 40% of your productivity, which is a lot. So let's dive into it. Now, this is obviously basic math, but I like to visualize things. So let's take an eight hour workday. So let's say we got 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. All right, so classic eight hours. All right, now let's say 40% of that, like you're losing 40% of your productivity. So what are you actually losing in an eight hour workday? That's roughly 0.4 times eight, which is gonna give you roughly 3.2 hours of your day lost, all right? Now, what does that look like in minutes? That's three hours and I think it's 12 minutes, all right? But I didn't do that calculation in my head, by the way. I like searched it up before, I'm just recalling memory from that. But like, if you're wasting about three hours and 12 minutes of your day, let's add like another 30 minutes to it because let's say an average lunch break is 30 minutes. You roughly got plus 30 minutes break, you roughly got three hours and 42 minutes for three hours. Yeah. Three hours and 42 minutes, right? Lost, right? Of the time that you're spending, not doing like not doing work, not being productive. So if we round that up, right? Effectively by like another 18 minutes, you get four hours. So really you're kind of wasting roughly half of your day, right? Half work day lost. Now, what this kind of means to me is that a lot of the time that I'm spending working, I'm actually not doing that much work. And so really, if I look at it from like a, like a very objective sort of lens, I could work 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and I would get, and if I if that was focused work, focused work where I'm not taking any breaks and it's very like deep work as Cal Newport would say, right? If I focused from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. straight, then I'd be getting the same amount of done, like the same amount of work done as if I was working nine to five, which is quite a big deal. And if you're working for yourself, this is probably like a really good thing to know because I've known like a lot of creators like Matt Diavella and I think um, a few others as well. They spend, I think only a few hours a day actually doing the work and they classify it knowing like using this overarching theme of deep work where it's basically deep focused work with no interruptions, no distractions and whatnot. And some people do it really early in the morning. Some people do it like really late at night, depending whether you're like a morning or night person. But for me, what this, like I suppose the kind of message that I want to get to is, is that a lot of your time is spent being extremely unproductive and task switching is inefficient. So how can we get more efficient? And that's where this idea of batching tasks come in. What is it? A simple definition of batching tasks is this, grouping similar tasks together to be completed at once. For example, creating a YouTube video has this rough process. Research the topic, write a script for it, review the script, shoot it, edit it, and then publish. So there's like a whole bunch of steps involved. Now, task batching would be like, let's say for example, I if you look at a time frame of a month, it means that I research four topics. It means that I write four scripts. And that means that I shoot all four of those videos at once. And then it means that all those, like all four of those videos are like sent off to be edited. And then they can like either be scheduled or like published depending on the timeline that we're working for. That's this idea of like batching tasks. Rather than going 
you know, research, script, shoot, research, script, shoot, research. It's like, there's like so much task switching involved. And the way that I like to think of it is that like, sometimes I'm just in a mood to just do research. Sometimes I'm just in the mood to just only shoot. And obviously it depends on the feeling, but sometimes it's like, you know, if I'm focused on just doing one thing for the day, whether it be like shooting through videos, then it means that I can get into that headspace a lot better because that headspace required for shooting is completely different as opposed to like script writing. Like it's two different mindsets that I'm working with, which means that I can actually get into the feel of what, what kind of, what part of myself do I wanna be using that day? Do I wanna be using my creative side? Do I wanna be using my expressive side? Like it's just, it's a bit different. Task batching doesn't only have to be for work. It can be for socializing as well. I generally have a week in the month that I kind of block out just for socializing. So if anyone wants to catch up with me, yes, catch up with you. Well, um, I have a week in the calendar that I block out whenever I wanna catch up with people and whether they choose or not to catch up with me. All right, the second thing I wanna share with you is Parkinson's law. Have you noticed when you give yourself two weeks to do something, it'll take you those two weeks, but a similar task. If you gave it two days, it'll take two days. This is pretty much Parkinson's law at play. Parkinson's law is pretty much work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. In other words, whatever time frame you give a task, that's how long it's gonna to take to complete it. Now, there is obviously exceptions to the rule, but in general, that's how it is. By approaching tasks with a shorter time frame, it means that we can be more efficient with our time and have more time to do things that we love or simply just take a break. Take a break. Okay, third thing, task stacking. I don't know if there's a proper term for this, but I feel like it's similar to like James Clear's habit stacking. But really for me, this is like hitting two birds with one stone, or it's like hitting multiple, like a flock of birds with a single stone. The way that I like to look at this, it's just activities that I do that kind of like hit multiple things at once. For example, neuroscience suggests that if you wanna feel better throughout the day and you wanna sleep better at night, then you should be doing these four things before 11 a.m. Hydrate, see people that you love, view sunlight, and get a bit of exercise done. If you can get these four things done before 11 a.m., then you're gonna be on track to having a really beautiful and amazing day. Taking your dog for a walk in the morning hits like three out of those things. You're getting outside, so you're viewing sunlight and you're getting a bit of exercise. Plus, you're like with someone, something that you love. This is a multi-benefit task. Another example that I like to do is like hitting the gym with a friend. That way I can socialize, but still get a workout in, which means that it's extremely efficient because it's a healthy activity and we're getting a bit of connection going on. Now with something like this, you obviously got to be very careful because if you were the mate that just loves to chat or just cannot focus, then that workout ends up being like three hours and you're just talking half the time and your rest times are way too long. And so the way that I do it is, is that me and my mate will catch up and we'll like work out really hard for 45 minutes to an hour and then We'll go hit the sauna and steam room and chat in there for about half an hour, right? So then that way it's like, all right, you know, we're pushing us, we're pushing each other to get the workout down, maybe maybe hitting a couple of PBs along the way. And then we're having a conversation and just catching, about, uh, catching up about what's going on in our lives. I personally find this a lot better, like catching up with people this way, rather than putting two hours, two plus hours, maybe even three hours aside to go out for dinner with someone. And that too, sometimes the food is not even that good, all right? Or like the dinner could be like ages away and then you just feel like your whole evening is gone. Of course, now and then you gotta catch up, but I personally don't like doing this every single week. These task switching activities can be really easy to identify in your life if you spend a little bit of time just thinking about it. So I would recommend just grabbing a pen and a piece of paper and just writing down things that you do throughout the day that you feel like you could stack. Or like if you were to do them, if you were to add things into your day that hit multiple things at once, for example, like walking your dog, right? Then it's like, you know, there's just something that you can think about that we can implement. We can then spend our time living with purpose and like, enjoying life. So there you have it, three simple principles that you can implement that can hopefully increase your productivity. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.